I made fire. And you're, it's exciting. It's a morale booster. All right, so we're starting this video off different. We're at the cabin in the swamp. I'm out here because I finished my online classroom. I had to go back and reshoot a bunch of scenes, things I wasn't happy with, things I thought, well, I can do that better or a different angle. I also wanted some inclement weather in there for wet weather fire starting, and it rained last night, so I was able to get that. So I've been running all week. So I'm here, all my gear's here, so why not do a video here? All right, so with that said, I mentioned last week, last solo overnighter last Sunday that I was doing three videos a week and I did that um, no matter how clear I make it most don't understand it and they seem to miss still well they had the question is this a video instead is there still an overnighter what, what's going on last week I changed it I said I was going to do three videos a week because that's what YouTube wants so I'm seen and heard so I went ahead and did three videos we did a tip or trick early in the week followed by a midweek video now we're doing our overnighter okay or our makeshift overnighter because I'm already out here. The overnight portion was last night. So from moving forward, you're gonna get three videos a week. Today's video, this is long-winded, but today's video I want to break down a bare bones minimum kit that's designed to keep you alive. There's gonna be zero comfort in this, period. Whether you're sitting outside in high winds, rain, snow, it will work in all environments. The only one it won't work in is if you're sitting there on Mars because there's no air, or the middle of Antarctica because there's no trees or any way to build a shelter, okay? So most people aren't gonna be dropped off a helicopter to the center of Antarctica or on top of Mount Everest and dropped off and said, go survive. That's not reality. What is reality is people in America, there's forests, there's trees, you're gonna find some type of shelter somewhere, either from a downed tree or a tarp or a poncho that you brought, okay, or a simple rain jacket, okay. So I want to focus on common sense. I want to focus on as minimum and bare bones as you can get, build that kit, and use that same kit as a base for larger kits, like get home bags, bug out bags, emergency car kits which are all the same thing. We'll do a video on that in the future. So with that, let's go ahead and kick this off with what I think a minimum bare bones kit should be that's designed for one purpose, to keep you dry, keep you warm, keep you hydrated, and keep you alive. So before we get any further, let's talk about this small setup right here. Yes, there's no comfort whatsoever in that. Will I be covered from elements? Yes. Can I trap body heat? Yes. Can I stay hydrated? Yes. Can I sharpen sticks if I needed to to help with my shelter system? Yes. Can I cut things down using the small saw on my knife? Yes. Can I light a fire to keep me warm or dry my clothes out? Yes. Most important thing on here, in my opinion, most important thing, is the compass that gives me the availability or the ability to walk a straight line might be lost but I'll walk a straight line we'll talk about all these things here in a minute being former military when I was in the Marine Corps we carried similar items to these if anybody thinks that these just came about in the past decade or so you're sorely mistaken go back in time Revolutionary War people had a backpack they had a candle they had a knife they had some type of tent. They had some type of rope back then. They had most of these items. A canteen. So these are nothing new. There's different versions of them, and everybody has their own take on them, and that's always a good thing. You have fresh information and fresh content, okay? But the reality is these things have been around for a long time, thousands of years. Some, type, some version of this has been around for several thousands of years clear back to Utsi the Iceman. He had basic setup. And they were out there on the move, on the go, in the snow. No, it's not a full tank knife. 
No, it's not a Rambo knife. It's a simple pocket knife. This is the Ranger Grip or the Victor Knox Ranger Grip 78. It's non serrated. Has a three inch blade on it. An important feature has a saw. Now I can cut small saplings down. If you look at this, you could easily cut down two and a half inch diameter logs and construct a simple shelter or some type of bipod to go with my poncho or tarp. So something like this in your pocket, worth its weight in gold. And you never want to leave home without it. The next item on my list, and in no particular order, is a Bic lighter. Why? Because I want to guarantee that flame first time every time. Some people are going to hear this or watch this and become triggered and say, I'm never going to abandon my Zippo. I can refuel it. You can't refuel the Bic. You're right. You can refill the Zippo. In the woods, if you're separated from your gear, your canoe rolls over and all these scenarios that survival and bushcraft has, where are you getting fuel to refill your Zippo? You're not going to find that in the woods anymore. Before we get too far down the trail, the Etsy store is open. Once again, my Etsy store is open. Go to my video description box, click on my Etsy link, and check it out. We got between 7 and 10 cold handle skillets. We have the hat patches, bag patches, universal patches. We have the meat forks. We have frog gigs. We have regular forks, military harness, and a whole lot more. So check her out. Once again, my video description box, the Etsy link. Click that bad boy. And thank you for your support. Also, if a Zippo gets wet, dropped in the creek, and say you recover it, you don't have the ability to simply blow on it and dry it out. You have to get the cotton out of there, dry the whole thing out, make sure it's completely free of moisture, then refill it, and then it actually would work. Whereas this one right here, you have a child safety lock on here. You have this small wheel and a small piece of flint. Once you've blown on it and shook the water out of it, nine and a half times out of ten, once the water's removed from that tube and the gas escapes, it will be lit by a spark. And I'll show all this next week. So that's why I prefer a Bic lighter, or the equivalent of a Bic lighter, over a Zippo any day of the week and twice on Sunday. And like I said, we'll get into this down the road. But for an emergency bare bones kit, this gives me the ability to light a fire immediately and get warm or get dry. And those that follow my channel, you know that I have a military harness and I just stated that. And in that harness I have my titanium bottle and I have a plastic canteen with a nesting cup. Now, I do that for two reasons. One, the nesting cup fits the plastic bottle that fits in the pouches. The nesting cup does not fit inside this and it won't fit in the pouch. So if I want my nesting cup, I gotta have some type of plastic bottle. Okay? So that's part one. Part two is I have a container I can boil in and I have a nesting cup that I can boil in. So why can't I transfer the nesting cup water into the plastic bottle Bottle A cools down, boil this one, bottle B cools down. Now I have a third option of a nesting cup to boil more as well. So if I'm covered in all those aspects and it works, how is that a problem? Cordage. Now I stated on my channel, I no longer carry paracord. And I put out a tip and trick video and somebody says, he's got paracord, he said he don't carry it. You're right, I don't carry it. I put paracord there so that you can see three different options. And if you noticed, there were three different types of cordage and one was a rope. I don't walk around through the woods with rope unless I'm doing some type of video on like say the predator trap in the woods or I'm showing you how to tie a rope to for a rope bridge, things like that. So no, I don't carry rope and no, I don't carry paracord. I carry number 36 or number 40 bank line. I have structures that are still up to this day from four years ago that are still standing and the cordage on there is just as strong because it's tarred, it is rot resistant, not rot proof. And this is a lot lighter. It's, I can carry more. A hundred foot of paracord is the same size as this. And this is about 250 feet. Because the roll is probably about two, well, it's about a third gone, okay? So doing the math on that, you get more bang for your buck. So why not carry it? Some don't like this, 
but I don't care because I've used it several times in the military and I've used it several times on my channel. I've used it several times at the school that I taught at. When you're on the go, when you're on the move, it is easier to throw a poncho over your body than carry extra rain gear. And here's why. The poncho you can use for a shelter. The rain gear on your body, you cannot. Think about that. Once the rain stops, and you have rain gear on your body, rain coat, rain pants, you're trapping body heat, so you start sweating. And your whole body will basically be wet on the inside, your clothes will be soaking wet. So what you're trying to prevent being wet, you're actually causing on the inside. So you have to vent, you gotta take the stuff off. Unless you're carrying a big backpack, how are you gonna store those items? You don't wanna take them off and just tie them around your waist. Because then if it rains again, you're soaking wet. Now you're forced to carry a large backpack, not a haversack for a quick day hike, or maybe a military harness. You gotta store them away somewhere. That's not a bad thing. If you prefer rain gear, by all means. I prefer the poncho, so I can throw it over my body, over my backpack, get to where I'm going, the water will roll off of me, and in a pinch, I can use it for a shelter. At the very least, I can sit with a poncho on, put a stick here, put a stick here, raise it up, sit back, have the fire in front of me, trap all of that heat underneath me, drive myself out, and worst case, lean up against a tree and rack out for a few minutes or maybe an hour or so. With the poncho, this is important. I want to include some type of trash bag. This is not a 55 gallon drum liner. This is just an ordinary household 13 gallon trash bag. It's very thin, it could rip open easily. But why I've included this is say you find some tinder along the way, you want to throw something in the bag, keep it dry if it's raining. If it's snowing, worst case, if I found some dead grass or dead leaves, I can stick it inside here and just create a seat that I could sit on to get off the ground. prevent that conduction when my body's touching the cold ground or my wet clothes and touching my body, touching the wet cold ground, as I'm sitting in front of a fire, I can sit on a bag of leaves. If I found a rock, that works great. Or a log, perfect. If not, a bag of leaves. I can at least sit on it, lean back against a tree, like I said, open the poncho up, and at least trap that heat. Worst case, if I made some type of shelter, I can lay on it from my core up and protect those vital organs. There is no comfort in any of these items except mentally knowing that you have them. And that in itself is a morale booster. Think about that, okay? Knowing that you have something when crap hits the fan and knowing you have options even if you had no idea how to use any of this stuff. Oh, I have this. Oh, I have that. Oh, look, I have a lighter. I can, like, I can make a fire. Say it took you two hours and half this big lighter to get a fire going because you had no skills at all. But you got one going. You'd be like Tom Hanks. I made fire. And you're, it's exciting. It's a morale booster. Oh, I'm getting rained on. I can put a poncho over me. Oh, I'm, I'm staying dry. You know, accidentally start feeling the heat go underneath and go, I'm trapping the heat. You know, so... Again, to a normal person, they see this and they're like, hell nah. But to somebody who has nothing that just would have these items, that mental, like morale booster, might keep them in the game long enough to be rescued. Like I said, even with the compass. Oh, look, this thing turns. Okay, I know it pointed in that direction. I'm going to walk south. And you're walking south for three days. Oh, look, there's a farmhouse. 
Last thing, I touched on this, is some type of compass. I'm military, but I don't like the military can make a compasses. I don't. They're not user friendly, and they don't have all the options that this has. I've shown this over the years several times. The Sunto MC2 or equivalent, Silva has an equivalent, and they work just as well. Increments on here are identical. Everything on them is, works the same. They even have a signal mirror on here as well. It's actually called a sighting mirror, but you can use it for signaling. Okay. You have a magnifying lens on here, so if it's full-on sun, you can actually start a fire or at least create an ember with a piece of punky wood that you could transfer later on or move it to a fire and actually blow it into flame. Um, bottom line, if you knew nothing about a compass and you said, I'm going to walk east, and you simply dialed this into east, and you're going to walk east until you find a house or a road, you know 100% you'll be walking a straight line versus walking in circles or ovals in the woods lost for four or five days. You still might be lost, but you're walking a straight line. And at some point in the United States, at some point, if you live that long, at some point, over several days, you'll find a road, you'll find a house. So that's why I've included this in a bare bones kit. A lot of bare bones kits don't have these. A lot of people don't understand the compass. A lot of people don't know how to use the compass. Um, my advice is go on YouTube, check out my videos, check out other people's videos, learn how to use one, like legit use one. This way you, you know you're walking this direction, you know you can get back, and you'll be in business. But the very minimum, walking a straight line could mean the difference between life or death. Just sitting like this in front of the fire, I can feel the heat passing through this poncho onto my skin. But check this out. Resting my hands on my knees like this, creating a small opening, I'm gonna get a lot more heat as well. So I could just rest my hands here lean back against this tree and rack out, as long as that fire's going, I'm gonna stay warm, even if it was actively snowing outside. Again, this is not 100% comfort. There's no comfort in this at all, except knowing that I have something. And I'm starting to sweat right now. So say it was zero degrees Fahrenheit outside, but it was 55 or 60 underneath here, you're gonna survive the night. Something to think about. So I'd end this bad boy off. With that, all the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One, my Amazon affiliate page, and two, my Etsy shop. Both links are found inside my description box. Now, please do me that favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. If you got a field, have some fun. I'm going to catch you next time.